Good day. We're happy to have you with us in this study of the scriptures. We're talking about uh, some of the Psalms and uh, giving a brief devotional study of some of the Psalms that are interesting. We want to talk today about the refuge of the soul, the refuge of the soul from Psalm 57. You know, the God who permits his people to fall into fiery trials is the very same God who can deliver them from those very troubles. When surrounded by adversity, God's people should call upon him to rescue them out of their troubles. After all, that's where we should go, isn't it? To God himself. This was the experience of David in Psalm 57. He uh, set forth this heartfelt prayer for deliverance when he was threatened by King Saul. The lament psalm was a special song or poem written by David when he fled from King Saul into the cave. The psalm was for the director of music, as it were, and it was to be sung to the tune of Do Not Destroy. Although threatened by King Saul, David expressed an unwavering confidence that God would rescue him from this desperate situation. Psalm 57 is connected to the previous psalm, Psalm 56, in its historical background and poetic language. A soul-stirring verse is repeated in this psalm, be exalted, O God, above the heavens, verses 5 and 11, much like the chorus that connects Psalm 42 and 43. This passage calls upon God to exalt himself, to exercise his power by reversing David's troublesome situation and to show himself to be the Lord over all. So here is a humble appeal for God's mercy <clears throat> by David. Verses one through five is a prayer for protection. Be merciful to me, O God. The psalmist's request is not for vengeance or destruction, but for God's watch care and mercy. Since his trust in God is so implicit, he's taking refuge in the confidence that God's mercy and truth will be sufficient. And then in verses 6 through 11, we have a resolution of thanksgiving. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. After a brief reminder of his present situation and the assurance that his enemies will suffer self-destruction, the psalmist makes his steadfast resolution. His praise is universal, and it arises from the two grounds of confidence named in verse 3. God's mercy and God's truth. The psalm closes with the prayerful verse exalting the universal sovereignty of God. Let's take a look at the first part of this psalm, verses one through three in Psalm 57, and look at David's petition, particularly at the beginning of verse one. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. David began with this passionate plea that God would have mercy on him. His petition is repeated twice to express an urgency, and it is an identical opening to Psalm 56. Ultimately, it was in God that David's soul took refuge for protection. As David trusted in God, he realized that he was under the shadow of God's wings. From time to time, we may sing a song, in the shadow of his wings, there is rest, sweet rest. There was nowhere else for David to turn, was there, but to turn to God. This picture is the divine care that he sought that was compared to the care of a mother bird for her young, as may be seen also in Psalm 17 in verse 8. But let's look at verses 2 and 3. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up, Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. God most high is a divine term which emphasizes that God is lifted up above all his creation 
over all circumstances and that he rules over all. This sovereign God, lifted up and transcendent, fills his purpose without any wavering according to his eternal decree. God can be trusted, David said. He sent from heaven and saved him, rebuking those who hotly pursued him. He was referring, of course, to Saul, King Saul, and his skilled warriors. God's overruling purposes are always a great motivation for prayer. In this verse, we also see this word, Selah. This confuses many people when they read the Psalms and find the word Selah in various parts of the Psalms. But it simply means a pause. Pause while reading or pause while singing. Silence before the next thought is given. That's all it means. Just pause for a brief few moments. In verses four through six, we then come to see David's persecutors. And we're going to read verses four and five. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Detailing his persecutors, uh, David lamented, I am in the midst of lions and ravenous beasts. He pictured these men with teeth like spears and arrows, meaning they had tongues which were like sharp swords. They were able to inflict disabling and deadly harm to him, such as the power of the tongue. And we're warned about the dangers of the tongue in the book of James, in James chapter 3. And then in the midst of describing these attackers, David's mind suddenly turns to God. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. This God-centered focus on the, the, the supreme uh, divinity of God was the strength of David's life in every adversity, a sheer anchor for his soul in the midst of trouble. David requested that God show his power and glory by coming to his rescue. Now in verse 6, they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. Selah. Returning then to the detailed picture of his enemies, David continues to expose them before the Lord. Like a hunter seeking prey, they had spread a net for his feet to entrap him. But God had promised to keep the feet of the righteous, and he will help us during those times of temptation. Instead of ensnaring David, they had fallen into the pit that they had dug for him. And then in verses 7 through 11, we see the praise that David gives unto God. In verses 7 and 8, he says, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. Still looking heavenward, David steadied his heart in God. His confidence was in God. My heart is steadfast, he repeated two times, underscoring the firm resolution of his heart to trust in God rather than pouting about the trouble that he was in, he declared, I will sing and make music in worship of Almighty God. And so he stirred up his heart, awake my soul, as if to say, let not my soul be sluggish or dull toward God. David then vowed to awaken before dawn to begin the day by offering fervent praise unto God. Now look at verses 9 and 10. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. So looking beyond the confinement of the cave where he was hiding out, in which he found himself, David vowed, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations and the peoples. Once he was delivered from his trouble, his worship of God would be his public expression to the unbelieving Gentile nation. 
David must praise God because his love was great, reaching under the heavens, because God's name was high and lifted up. So David's praise must be high and lifted up unto God. Now notice what he says in verse 11. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, that your glory be above all the earth. Repeating what he had earlier spoken, David concluded, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. This was an appeal for God to demonstrate his sovereignty, his power, his greatness, his glory by intervening in David's life, by changing the situation that David was in, reversing his plight and turning back his enemies. Such a rescue, such a deliverance would display God's glory over all the earth. Friends, no matter what difficulty may come to those who strive to serve God, those who do serve him must take refuge in God himself, calling upon him for mercy and for help in time of need. God is a Savior who delights in rescuing his people, not only from their sin, but also from their suffering and sorrow. In an hour of trouble, let the righteous lift up, the, up to God the petition for him, for God, to exalt himself above the heavens. He will display his greatness and his power over their lives by causing all things to work together for his glory and their good. May our hearts be awakened to sing the praise of God. Let us always glorify God and extol his name above all, because he is our creator, and he is the author and savior of our souls. When we, through obedience from the heart, Obey his divine will for our lives, the salvation of the soul. Thank you so much for participating with us in this study. And until next time, remember, keep your Bibles open and your hearts receptive to the truth.